Manipulation, the ability to control and influence a person or situation cleverly or unfairly. The psychological term was coined back many centuries ago. Manipulation has been a psychological weapon used for centuries in order for people to get what they want without having to use any sort of physical means. Easy examples of this could be saying no to your dog for an extra treat, but then he gives you the little puppy dog eyes and you cave in because who's saying no to a cute face like that? Or you say no to hanging out with your girlfriend because you have a paper due tomorrow, but it says pretty please and you end up taking her to the aquarium instead. Boom. You've been manipulated. Manipulation isn't necessarily a bad or good thing, rather it all depends on the intention of the individual and circumstances that surround certain situations. A good form of manipulation could be seen when you're training really hard and when you think you're at your limit, someone gives you words of encouragement or a boost of motivation and suddenly you're able to exceed those limits without the physical assistance of others. However, manipulation is often used for personal gain and selfish motives. It's such an advanced psychological skill that people made books detailing how to influence people's actions for your benefit. An example of manipulation can be seen in the media with the likes of Will and Jada Smith. It's no secret that Will and Jada's relationship has been absolutely cooked for the last few years. Jada has slowly made Will lose his mind ever since that podcast where she admitted to being in an entanglement. We've seen in real time Will completely lose his sanity and reputation due to the manipulative tactics of Jada Pinkett. Will Smith went from being a prominent actor in Hollywood into a complete laughing stock just because of her antics alone. Even when Will smacked Chris Rock a few years ago, she thought that Will was in the wrong for doing that even though Will was trying to defend his little pookie bear. It gets a bit stranger because Jada was confused since she believed that Will and her were separated at that time. If they weren't together at that time, why would Will go out of his way to do something like that? This was manipulation at its finest. Manipulation can come in different forms as well. A big example of this can be seen through the likes of gaslighting. And no, gaslighting isn't when a person of interest doesn't text you back for days at a time and you see them post on social media. If anything, that person just probably doesn't feel the same and you're probably a little insecure that they don't respond on time. Gaslighting, according to the American Psychological Association, is to manipulate another person into doubting their own perception, experiences, or understanding of life. If I can summarize the definition of gaslighting in a nutshell, it'd be like this. From now on, you'll doubt every thought you have. <laughs> That's ridiculous. There's no way a board game can make that happen. Or can it? Well then, I'm finishing the game right now. Or are you? <sighs> Every sentence you say is going to start with or, isn't it? Or is it? A perfect example of gaslighting can be seen within the classic anime, Monster. To give a brief 60 second summary about Monster, Monster is a story that takes place in the 80s in Germany. A dark syndicate called the 511 Kinderham aimed to create another Hitler by raising orphanage kids to become master assassins and spies. One kid ended up rising through the ranks and became a monster and that kid grew up to be one of the most iconic antagonists in anime known as Johann Liebert. What made Johan an incredible adversary wasn't necessarily his character or his looks, but rather his manipulative tactics throughout the story. In specific, his ability to gaslight the people he came across. While Johan was a brutal killer that had no true emotion, he wouldn't necessarily have to commit all his evil deeds alone. He'd simply manipulate people to do his evil biddings for him. Once they complete Johan's task, he'd simply take their lives or they would take their own life due to how Johan gaslit their person perception of the world and how to live. They feared him that much. I know it sounds insane, but just follow me for a quick second. When Johan was on the run, a clever detective in the police force named Richard finally caught up to him. Just when Richard was about to make the arrest, he ended up taking his own life instead. But how does a well-renowned detective go from being on the edge of making the greatest arrest in the 20th century to ending up self-deleting? Let's start from Richard's backstory. Richard was a police investigator back in the day and during that time had a drinking problem. It spiraled so bad to the point that it began to impact his family, causing his wife and child to leave him. During that time, there was a teenage serial killer that needed to be captured and brought into the police. However, when he caught up to the teenager, he decided to shoot him then and there. Richard's explanation was that he was drinking on the job and made a terrible mistake because they were under oath to capture him instead of killing him. 
Ever since then, he's been trying to recover from being an alcoholic for his job and more importantly, his family. I know these details sound minor, but trust me, this is important to the point I'm trying to make about gaslighting. Alright, so flash forward to the present time. Johan knew the story behind Richard and questioned the validity behind his past. During the conversation, not only does Johan cast out on Richard's story, but he also begins to gaslight Richard by warping his ideas of those events even though he wasn't present at that time, casting doubt around his claims, questioning whether or not he was really drunk when the incident occurred, or if he just wanted to get revenge on the victims of the serial killer. After Johan gaslights Richard, Johan offers him one substance that he's been trying to recover from, alcohol. Although not depicted on screen, it can be assumed that due to the guilt of his past, that Richard felt shame to the point that he not only took the drink, but with it, his life. Do you know how insane that is? Johan, a character that has never spoken to Richard in his life, was able to gaslight Richard's thoughts and reality so significantly that it forced him to relapse back into alcoholism and eventually end his life from the shame and guilt he felt. That's what gaslighting truly is. To completely change someone's perspective on reality without having to alter anything in real life is devious work. But he wouldn't just use gaslighting on him, he also did it on children. For example, he was able to convince a kid that if he doesn't find his mom, keep in mind this kid is probably an orphan that nobody truly wanted him in life and implies that he should just end himself. He does this to a lot of children as well. Honestly, if I were to give you a quick summary about how Johan would gaslight kids, it would go like this. Your life is nothing. You serve zero purpose. You should kill yourself now. Johan's manipulation skills are so insane to the point that there are literal YouTube tutorials on how to manipulate people just like he did, which is a bit concerning when you consider all the things this guy did in the story. But there's one more form of manipulation I'd like to go over in this video, and that's love bombing. If there's one show that captures this form of manipulation perfectly, it'd be the well-renowned anime known as Chainsaw Man. Eh, they kind of capture it. You'll see what I mean. Essentially, love bombing is the use of things such as attention, affection, or adoration in order to get someone to do things for the manipulator. The manipulator in this example is Makima, while the manipulated is our main character, Denji. Now, this example is going to seem off since it looks like Makima doesn't really care about Denji, but perspective is everything. When we meet Denji, he's a lonely and broken kid that doesn't have much to his name and in order to get by, he takes up small jobs that pay him just enough to live. He doesn't have any friends or family and longs for connection. Enter Makima. When Denji meets her for the first time, he asks for a simple hug and from the jump knew exactly what Denji longed for. Denji wanted connection and belonging, and while she does give Denji the ultimatum between working under her or getting killed, she does offer Denji the things he most desperately seeks in life with food, shelter, and most important, care. Now I know it doesn't sound like Makima is showering Denji in adoration or affection by giving him basic necessities, but it kind of is, at least once you understand the perspective of Denji. You have to remember that Denji doesn't have friends or family or people to rely on, so he's never shown any sort of attention in his life until he meets Makima. So Makima giving Denji glimpses of these elements immediately makes him fall in love with her. Makima saw through all of it and recognized it as an opportunity to exploit Denji for his powers. Showing a little adoration and affection on her side was everything on Denji's side of things. While it seems like Denji is a brain dead pervert that just wants to smash women, throughout the story it's clear that he longs for something much more such as companionship and even though he goes out with other women in the story, he just doesn't feel the same emotion because he truly feels a connection with Makima. With this, Denji was too infatuated to see through Makima's facade and if she wanted more from Denji, all she need to do is simply give him more attention attention. Manipulation is quite the tool and if you're not careful, you could easily fall into it from anyone. It comes in many forms and more often than not can ruin you for the sake of benefiting someone else. Honestly, it's hard to tell people's true intentions. You never really know whose motives are selfish. But Kings, why would I make a video on a topic like this? Who knows, maybe I manipulated you to watch this video and to like it. I'm joking. Simply, it's because I don't want you to fall for manipulation. There are two ways to avoid these psychological techniques. One, stand on business. What I mean by that is simply being confident in what you believe in. Don't let people dictate and monitor how you're supposed to do 
feel or perceive things. It's important to stand on your belief system and to think for yourself instead of doubting yourself and letting people think for you, King. Number two, never let people see how you emotionally respond to a certain situation. Let's say for example that you get angry every time someone gets your food order wrong. Someone could see that emotional response and try to get those emotional responses for their benefit. So make sure to respond to things in a calm manner in any situation and stand strong in every decision you make. That's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please like and comment down below. I bet you're confused on why I made a video like this and honestly, I was feeling educational and wanted to help you kings out. Also kings, I'm very sorry about my uploading schedule. I know it's been peak garbage. I truly need to do better. I can't lie, I'll be thinking that I posted like a week ago, but in reality, it's been a month. What? Honestly, I really want to be big on this YouTube thing and posting once a month simply will not cut it. I won't be making any promises on what I'm going to upload next. I'm just going to be consistent and be a man of my word. Once again, I appreciate you for making it this far into the video. In fact, since you stayed all the way till the end, I got a little secret for y'all. Next week, we will be talking about the friend zone, and if that interests you, make sure to subscribe to the channel, King, and join the rest of the Kings on this side of the internet. It's been your boy, King Theodore, and until we meet again, have a wonderful day, keep it 100, and cue the outro.